Good morning, everybody. Chris from the Headache and Pain Management Centre here for your Monday morning. I'm just walking down uh, Stanley Street to grab a coffee, and it reminded me that this weekend is the biggest game of AFL football that Brisbane's seen in the last 10 years. So I thought that I'd talk about sports people, and uh, a question that we often get asked about is how do sports people actually able to push through the pain barrier like they do? How can they break, you know, break jaws, break, well, you know, tear hamstrings, sprain ankles, and yet still be able to do superhuman things like, you know, just keeping running, getting tackled, um, and all these sorts of things. So um, I just thought I'd share that with you today. If you're joining me, type in below, say hello, and uh, happy to do that. And I hope you can hear me with the uh, traffic going past. Uh, here for a Monday morning. So yeah, when it comes to sports people, it's really interesting. Um, you've got to remember that sports people are humans just like you. So um, anything that they can do and anything that they're able to achieve, um, you're actually able to achieve yourself. Um, so if they can do it, you can do it. So that's a really important thing to note. Now, just because they're a little different, they're a bit fitter sometimes, doesn't mean that their tolerance to pain is any different to a regular person. In fact, what we sometimes find is that they can be just as sensitive to pain as what you guys are. It's just that it, uh, they're better able to manage it. How do they do that? So when it comes to pain, uh, as we know, pain is a, you know, it's a perception of how dangerous something is at any given time, either real danger or perceived danger. Okay, so some people um, can have sort of what we call a low pain threshold, others can have a high one, um, but their tolerances can be different. So you've got to have a difference between threshold and tolerance. So with sports people, they've got a very high pain tolerance. They're able to cop a lot and it doesn't phase them too much. Um, you know, it phases them after the game perhaps, but uh, other people, they have a very low pain tolerance where basically the pain come, the, the pain may come on at the same time but they're not as able to handle it so what athletes have is a higher pain tolerance in that they're able to actually get the pain and keep going the second thing that can happen though which is really important is that everyone's brain is different so people's threshold can be higher or lower as well so what that means is that the uh, threshold met can be you know different on different people so let's say for example um, we've got um, an athlete who has injured themselves quite a lot they might have done a hamstring or a calf numerous times and uh, they are feeling you know quite down about that they've missed um, a lot of sport um, there's a lot of other factors going on they need to earn a lot of money to actually stay employed um, they need to get on the. They actually need to get on the park to actually stay employed. So their body is really important to them. So when it comes to athletes, this is often why they're very, very reliant on things like massage and other people to actually, you know, quote, keep them on board. So even though they're built very, very strongly, they're built like Tarzan. Um, a lot of these guys, um, they actually feel like they need a lot of people to keep them. Um, you know, together. When the actual fact is, they're actually stronger than everybody else, and they don't need that to be kept together. So what's going on? Well, it's basically what their brain is telling them is that they need the help. They actually need to have these people look after them so that they can actually keep functioning. Whereas the reality is they don't need to. So you can see that humans, uh, sorry, that athletes are humans just like you. So they can actually be, um, you know, just as vulnerable. They can be just as, um, they can be just as, I wouldn't say, what's the word I'm looking for? They're at just as much risk of actually having pain affect their lives as you guys are. And in fact, can actually have a bigger uh, impact because basically their bodies are their life. So you actually see a lot of people, they, a lot of sports people, they're really nervous about their body. They're really nervous about what's going to happen. And you see others which are just overtly confident with it as well. It's just really, really interesting. Um, there was an example a few years ago of a athlete who broke his jaw uh, playing a grand final. And what happened there is that he broke his jaw uh, five minutes in and yet he was able to keep playing all the way through into the end of the grand final. This guy had broken his jaw in four places. Okay, this was an elite athlete, NRL player, who, uh, where this happened. So what was it that actually kept him playing? So what actually happened here was that uh, there was obviously very severe tissue damage in that his jaw was broken. Um, it was you know, unequivocally broken. You can see that there was swelling in his eyes, 
there was a black eye, uh, his jaw was all swollen, yet he still was able to play. Yet, if I was to walk down Stanley Street right now and get punched in the face and break my jaw in five places, that would hurt a lot and I'd be straight to the hospital. So what's the difference with uh, this athlete's brain compared to my brain at this moment? So when he's playing a grand final, there's a lot of context around that. So as you might know from other videos, pain relies on context. So when you have uh, certain situations, you're able to push through. In other situations, you're like, well, maybe it's uh, maybe it's not so important to do that. So oh, I'm just walking through a tunnel here. I might actually come back into the light. So what happens is with this guy is that he broke his jaw in five places, but his brain realised that there was more important things going on right now, such as winning a grand final, such as uh, being in front of 85,000 people and five million people on the TV. So basically, his brain flushed his system with a whole bunch of pain-killing chemicals called endogenous opioids, which was able to suppress his pain until the grand final was won and done. And uh, if you read the reports afterwards, the pain only came on, according to him, uh, the pain came on about 75 minutes in when he knew the game was won. So his body and his brain knew that he didn't have to deal with his pain anymore. There wasn't a job to do, so therefore he didn't have the pain. Well, therefore the pain came on after that. And you see various examples of this in the battlefield, People like soldiers, uh, you know, they get shot and they keep running. You see uh, mothers do superhuman things for their kids. So this is how the body's pain system works. So I guess the lesson from all of this is that sports people, uh, military people, very, very strong people are no different to you and I. Their brains are the same, but they're able to train their brains so they're able to deal with pain better because they know how it all operates. What it also means is that they're, more, they're just as susceptible to you as well, and sometimes more so, to be fearful, anxious with what might happen to their body because their bodies and their brain, so their bodies actually are reliant that they are reliant on their bodies to actually make money because of their um, their athletic pursuits. Hope that's been helpful. Hope that's been interesting. If there's anything that you'd like to ask, please type in below. I hope you're able to hear me through uh, all the traffic walking down this busy Monday morning. And I will talk to you again soon for another Facebook Live video. Cheers and bye for now.